Jerusalem at night. I love it. You gotta love it also. Look how beautiful it is. Jerusalem. Just say the word. Jerusalem. It's like a dream come true. City of the Jewish people, center of the entire world. This is it. Jerusalem. The walls are behind me and it's a beautiful night. But there were nights in Jewish history that weren't so beautiful. There were nights when a big fire was burning our temple. Two temples were destroyed on the same night on the Jewish calendar, the 9th of Av. And today we mourn Tisha B'Av as the saddest day in the Jewish calendar. But why should we mourn this sad day when we are back, when the Jewish people have returned to Jerusalem, when Jerusalem is glorious again? Well, tonight on Ion Zion, me, Ishai Fleischer, and you are going to find out. All right, we're heading towards home. We're going to see Abba and Ima today. We're going to Hebron. Hebron. You know, I was married in Hebron. Hebron. That's because I wanted to be close to Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. That's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Sarah, Rebecca, Leah. Picture this. The Jewish people are in bondage and slavery in the land of Egypt. God sends Moses to take them out. Ten plagues, splitting of the Red Sea, the Jewish people exodus. And now they head towards the receiving of the Torah at Mount Sinai in the Sinai Desert. And there Moses brings down the Ten Commandments and the law for the Jewish people, the Torah. But the Torah is to be kept in the land of Israel. Therefore, the final destination of the Jewish people is the land of Israel. And the trek begins. Na, 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 they come to the edge of the land of Israel. Moses decides it's time to send in spies in order to militarily understand how to capture the land of Israel. And so begins the story of the spies. They, the spies, ascended and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin to the expanse at the approach of Hamath that's from the south of Israel all the way to the north. They ascended in the south and he arrived at Hebron. He is Kalev, the son of Yefuneh, and he arrived here at the cave of the patriarchs in Hebron. They returned from spying out the land at the end of 40 days to the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They left the land of Israel and went back out into the desert. They brought back the report to them and they showed them the fruit of the land. We arrived at the land to which you sent us. And indeed, it flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. So far, so good. Everything is right. But, and here comes the but. The people that dwells in the land is powerful. The cities are fortified and very great. And we also saw there the offspring of the giants. Ooh, there's danger. Caleb silenced the people towards Moses. And he said, he sensed what was going on. And he said, we shall surely ascend and conquer it for we can surely do it. But the men who had ascended with him, the other spies said, we cannot ascend to the people for it is too strong for us. All the people that we saw there are huge. We were like grasshoppers in our eyes and so we were in their eyes as well. So the fear swept them up so much that they were sure that they were tiny little creatures in the eyes of their potential enemies. The people wept that night. And you know what night that is. That's the ninth of Tisha B'Av. All the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron. Not enough to diss the land of Israel. Now they were against the leadership as well. And the entire assembly said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt. If only we had died in the wilderness. Why is Hashem bringing us to this land to die by the sword? So they said to one another, Let us appoint a leader and let us return to Egypt. Moses and Aaron fell on their faces. Joshua, the son of Nun, and Kalev, son of Jephunneh, spoke to the children of Israel, saying, The land that we passed through to spy it out, the land is very, very good. If Hashem desires us, He will bring us to this land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. But do not rebel against Hashem. You should not fear the people of the land. Hashem is with us. Do not fear them. But the entire assembly said to pelt them with stones. 
They wanted to pelt the leadership, to kill the leadership. And then the glory of Hashem appeared in the tent of meeting to all the children of Israel. Well, folks, that was the sin of the spies. And that was the ninth of Av. I am here on the Temple Mount, the holiest place in the world. This is the place where Abraham almost sacrificed Isaac. This is the place where two temples stood. Solomon's temple and Ezra and Nehemiah's temple. Herod built this temple up, made it beautiful, and it was destroyed twice. On the same day, Tisha B'Av. Why on the same day? What's the meaning of this day, Tisha B'Av? Well, Tisha B'Av is the very day when the spies spread their bad ideas and the people, the camp, became full of fear and trepidation. And they all said in unison, we cannot go, we cannot go. They angered God so much because they rejected His grand plan. They rejected the vision of the forefathers that loved this land so much and that yearned so much to always come back to this land and live here. They rejected all of that and they turned their backs and they said, let's turn around and go back to Egypt. Their slave mentality came through. God was so angered by this event that He said, I cannot even punish you with the full might of my anger. I have to give you long suffering. That's what Moses asked for. He said, God, don't punish them at once. Give them long suffering. Long suffering means the punishment will be meted out in parts. And God said, all right, you cried for nothing on the night of Tisha B'Av. You cried for nothing. I will give you a reason to cry. On that night, your temples will be destroyed. And on this night, too, we yearn that one day, the ninth of Av will become a holiday. Will become a holiday of the temple. Will become a holiday of the land of Israel. A holiday that will go from the ninth of Av to the 15th of Av. A holiday of joy, of the return of the Jewish people to the land of Israel. Because there's only one way to fix the sin of the spies, of the rejection of the land of Israel. It's not by fasting or, cry or crying. It's not by mourning. It's actually fixing it with our feet, with our legs. The opportunity has arrived. Now it's time to fix the sin, do the tikkun, and walk up to the land of Israel with a report of joy, a report of laughter, a report of thanks. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to go to the land of Israel. This Tisha B'Av, this Tisha B'Av will be different. This is my This is my This is the place where I want to be. A home no one can take away from me. This is my This is my Hi on Zion, we're going out to greet the Olim plane. The immigrants, the Jewish Olim, they're coming back. And as we talked about, the issue is, is this the rectification of the sin of the spies? Is this what's going to turn Tisha B'Av into a day of joy instead of a day of sadness? That's the issue. There they are. These are the people that are coming to greet the Jews that are coming home. They're not immigrants. They're home. They were immigrants over there. Here they're in the right place. Let's keep going. Well, it's always very exciting. And for me it is as if to live in you, my own Aliyah. That's why I like, even before I was the head of Jewish agency, I was coming almost on every airplane and every plane because it's very, very emotional for me. Now you are the head of the Jewish agency. Yeah. So look, at the, our Jewish agency brought three million Jews, oh. one million from Russia. So with the, every bus will be, will be more and more. Amen. <laughs> Used to be American, baby. <laughs> now he's Israeli. Welcome to Israel. 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 Welcome to and Rabbi Fass, you just got off a plane. 232 new, new immigrants uh, just got off the plane. It just felt like really, not, not was 
not a collection of individuals, but really the Jewish people. We're kind of reforming again here in the land of Israel. And, and we're doing a movie, we're doing a show on Ion Zion. We're doing a show about uh, the Miraglim and about the story of the Ninth of Av. And my question to you is today, after seeing all this, is this a rectification of the sin of the spies? Is this a way to, in our modern day, to fix it, to make Tisha B'Av what it's supposed to be, a happy day? I don't know who I am to even say whether or not something's a rectification of anything of the past. I do believe that it is perhaps rehabilitating a core issue that the Jewish people had, of a, a disconnect with an incredible gift that God gave the Jewish people. God promised us a destiny in, of the Jewish people in the land of Israel, and we rejected it in the desert for all the different reasons. Either we're feared, fearful or afraid, or we didn't have enough gumption to make the move. And that itself was the, the source for further destructions, a further disconnect between the Jewish people and the land of Israel. And now Jews are reconnecting to the land of Israel, showing their love, embracing with both hands the gift that God gives us. And I think the responsibility of this generation is to enthusiastically uh, grasp, this, grasp this opportunity, whether or not for themselves it's a rehabilitative or whether or not it's for the nation, but to show the love and passion to God's gift. We're at the tomb of Rachel, the matriarch Rachel, and we're here because Rachel, as we learn in Jeremiah 31, refuses to be consoled. She continuously cries because her children aren't home. Rachel, she is alone. She's not buried with the rest of the matriarchs and the patriarchs. She stands alone, crying eternally to God, saying, when will my children return home? That's exactly what Tisha, Tisha B'Av is about, the ninth of Av. It's a sad day because the Jewish people are exiled. However, Rav Tzadok Milobling teaches us that from the 9th of Av till the 15th of Av till Tu Av, one day will be a tremendous festival when all the Jewish people will be returned to the land of Israel. It will be a festival of the temple, a Yom Simcha, a joyous day, a joyous occasion, a joyous festival when we will all be reunited under God's great umbrella, under God's great blessing, and then finally Rachel will stop crying. Sometimes I lay under the moon and thank God I'm breathing. And I pray, don't take me soon, cause I am here for a reason. Sometimes in my tears I drown, but I never let it get me down. So when negativity surrounds, I know someday it'll all turn around because all my life I've been waiting for, I've been praying for, for the people to say that we don't want to fight no more. There'll be no more war, and our children will play one day.